death. And I don't mean it metaphorically or rhetorically or poetically or theoretically or in any other fancy way. I'm death straight up. Hell of a Boss is probably one of the most successful shows out there, and free as well. It's not only good as a webtoon, but also really good as, you know, a show in general. And you guys really loved my last Hell of a Boss related video, so I will decide to do another one. But instead of checking out the things I love, I'm going to torment myself and check out the things I hate. The first two episodes are meh. They feel really underwhelming, and even if the animation is good, the writing is just mediocre. I don't want to say bad, because it feels like an overstretch, but it's not great in the same way other episodes are. I'm going to start off with episode 1 of season 2. Now, I could explain why this episode in general is pretty bad, like how it doesn't really feel like the start of a, a season, or how Blitz and Stolas being childhood friends makes no sense. But if there's one thing I want to focus on in this episode, it's Stella. Her character makes no sense in the scheme of things, and she comes up as bland and dumb character-wise. If anything, it feels more like she was just copied from random fan fictions, like some of the scenes do, to please talk to fans. She doesn't fit the show, and her character not only makes her look bad, but it ruins the entire show. I'll show you why. Let's compare Stella to all the characters in the show, as well as all our favorite villains, to see why Stella is a heap of bad writing. Stella's character makes no damn sense. Everyone in the show has multiple character traits that have a good and bad side to them. That's because Hiluva Boss is a morally gray world. A world where angels are monsters and demons are heroes. Here are some examples. Blitz is a horny assassin and violent killer, but he is also a caring father figure. Moxie is calm and sophisticated, but he is also egotistical and entitled. Millie is friendly and happy, but she is also short-tempered and protective. Solus is a man who wants to be happy, but in doing so, ruins his daughter's life and messes up Blitz's. That's who these characters are. That's their light side and their dark side. Characters who are both good and bad people. Stella is the only character who isn't like this, and if you want to argue that she's a villain, so it's okay. But let's check out the other villains in the show. Verasica is both egotistical and mean, but she is broken. Stryker is psychotic and power hungry, but he's a charismatic character. Rosmodius portrays himself as a giant pervert, but in reality he's a very loving person. Stella is just mean and really mean. Her motives and characterization are everywhere. Before it's Stolas cheated on Stella and blamed her for it. So she has some sort of reason for that. Then we see her in her backstory and it shows that she's just a bad person throughout her whole life. It ruins anything that this character had. Stella's only shown to have one emotion, that's anger. That's all she is, and that's all she can be. She's not charismatic like Hades. She's not scary like Homelander or Frollo. She's not calm and collected like Omni-Man. She's just mean. Which makes no sense. She's supposed to be a character in an adult show, but she feels more like a character in a kid's show. <laughs> if your villain feels less mature than the surrounding world they live in, then your villain fails. Like I said before, Hello of a Boss is a morally gray area. It's bad guys versus bad guys with no clear line of heroism. But Stella breaks that. Before the show, Stella was angry at Stolas for cheating on her. Not only did he cheat on her, but he cheated on her with an imp, which made her look bad socially. But he blamed her and showed no remorse. It made Stolas look in the wrong, which also adds to his character when you see him being kind to Octavia. But now... We see that Stella didn't give a crap about Stolas or her status, and it ruins that character. It ruins Stolas' character, as it makes him look like an absolute saint for cheating on his wife, to the point where he seems pure-hearted, and it makes the characters like Blitz and Octavia look worse than selfish. Octavia looks bad because she resents her father for the divorce, despite him being in an abusive relationship, 
and Blitz looks bad for rejecting Stolas' advances. It kills the show, and now the Stolas doesn't have any negative qualities, and Blitz and Octavia have less positive qualities. Let's look at examples of morally gray villains. Amos from Fox and the Hound isn't trying to kill Todd because he's evil. Hunters hunt foxes. It's part of his job. Plus, Todd caused trouble for Amos and nearly killed his dog. This is a morally great setting to the movie, as Todd didn't mean to hurt Chief, but he still did, which causes Amos and Copper to go on a path of vengeance. Stella being mean because she is, rather than being betrayed, turns Stolas' arc from gray to black and white. I guess you could say it's unfair because there's many hateable villains that don't take the gray from a setting away, but there's a reason for that. Joffrey Baratheon is a very hateable figure, as he is a tyrant and psychopath that cares more about his power and sadism than helping people. But that doesn't take away from the gray setting of Game of Thrones, as it fills it even more. It was Robert and Cersei's fault that Joffrey turned into a madman, and it doesn't take away from other characters as they've done bad things that aren't tied to Joffrey's character. But Stolas' actions are tied to Stella, so making Stella the way she is ruins what value those actions had. I brought this up a couple times, but I think we should go more in-depth in it. Stella has no motivation, and it's not like she has none at all. It was taken away just to make her look worst. Stella doesn't have a reason or explanation why she's mean, she's just mean. Vigo wasn't sending guys to kill John Wick because he's a bad guy, he just wants to protect his son. Ingressus isn't starting a world war because he's a bad guy, his people were slaughtered, and he wants justice. Stella doesn't have any real motive, whether it be noble or selfish. She's just evil because she can be. At first we thought she was power hungry and really angry at Stella's because he basically ruined her life. That's a good motivation. Even if it's not some noble cause, it's clearly something we can understand. But all of that is taken away in one episode where we see Stella publicly humiliating Stolas and emotionally abusing him. The show took away Stella's motivation and made her one-dimensional on purpose. Why? That's what we'll get into. I think what makes Stella one of the worst villains I've ever seen isn't just because she was poorly written by accident. It would have been more forgivable if it was by accident. But it feels more like it was on purpose. We need to really address the elephant in the room, and I know this is going to cost me my head, so let's just get this over with. The fact is, this episode felt very fan fiction-y. Like, I, I can't be the only one that thinks that. Before episode 1 of season 2, there were so many fan, fan fictions that portrayed Stella as this pure evil abuser, just to push forward their solid ships. And I'm giving you guys, I kind of like this one, but... It shows how messed up this fanbase is, and I feel like the writers had to copy these fanfics just so that they wouldn't get some sort of backfire by stolen shippers. You don't think that would happen? Let me introduce you to Ron the Death Eater. When Harry Potter was at its peak popularity, there was a trend by most fans where they wanted to ship Hermione and Harry together, but canonically in the series, Ron was dating Hermione. This led to some fans making weird theories and stories that Ron is actually a Death Eater and abuses Hermione so that they can push their theory, I mean their ships, with Harry. The worst part is, the films actually use these fan fictions to make Ron look bad and that's why a large majority of the book fans hate the Harry Potter movies. I really don't want to like hate the writers too much because I love this show, but it's messed up. Like, it... It doesn't make them look bad, really, because these are really horrible fans we're talking about. These are people that harassed Vivzy Pop just because one of their episodes took, like, a month longer than it should have. Like, I get it. Fan theories happen all the time, and sometimes fan theories are right because people are smart. But these aren't fan theories. These were fan fictions that were made specifically to push their stolen ships. All I could really take from making this video is that Stella is basically just one of the worst villains I've seen. She doesn't have any real motivation, she doesn't have any real character, 
and she's just bad fan service. All of that basically ruins her and practically makes her one of the worst villains of the century, I'd say. I don't know. All I can think of is that this show might end up on a decline, I hope not, but maybe we might need to see more of Stella over time. Who knows? All I can think of is that they literally made a character one-dimensional just so that an owl can abuse a lizard. So before I wrote down an entire section of the video where I would um, predict a bunch of counter-arguments and then just like push them back and just tell them how they're wrong. But I think I'll save that for another video once this one gets a lot of views because <laughs> this is probably the most heavily edited video I've ever made in a long time. And it took a very long time to make, probably longer than it should have. And I also want to go back to gaming content as soon as I can. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.